Hi guys, Zator here. Today I'm going to be going over how I mixed and mastered the song Look Good, Feel Good by the Nasty Geographic. So let's go ahead and get in. Uh, so first things first, we're using uh, MIDI drums at the moment. Uh, it's not finalized, but we got to make the best of what we got. So let's look at channel one here. Solo that. Uh, first, I'm just using a little bit of EQ. Uh, this was to give the kick more of a thump. I uh, kept the snare right about where it should be at 200 hertz and toned down the hi-hats to help them sit better in the mix because they were rather loud. And that's what the second EQ is for as well. It's just a gradual roll off on the high end. Uh, and that was after I had done all the uh, post uh, mastering. So the drums, not really a lot done with them. Didn't feel like they needed quite a lot. Uh, really straightforward there. Uh, for the second part, though, what we have is bass. Uh, that's channel four. And bass was a really important part of this song. Uh, you can hear the bass line is absolutely fantastic. Uh, but I blatantly kind of smashed it. So I really wanted the really low end on the bass guitar to come through. So you can see here that I'm filtering off anything below about... 30 hertz, um, but then boosting in the 40 hertz range. Uh, that'll help with anyone who has subwoofers. That'll help that punch through a little bit more. Uh, to, to help clear up a little bit of the mud uh, at 100 hertz, 150 hertz, whereabout, I have a little bit of a drop off, not not anything too substantial, and then a small drop off in the high end. Not much going on there. Oops. Uh, then I'm compressing. Quite a lot of compression, actually. Uh, pretty low threshold, but really wanted to slam the bass uh, to make it as easy as possible to uh, mix in with everything else. Um, I do have a couple of settings to turn on here, oversample and linear phase filter. Oversample is basically turning the sample rate up within the compressor. Uh, it helps with uh, latency somewhat and uh, can really help uh, I say latency. Uh, the best way to explain it is it's running at an internal frequency higher than uh, the frequency that I'm running the FL Studio in. I'm running at 48 kilohertz at the moment, so this would be running at like 96 kilohertz. Um, especially when it comes to bass, having uh, phase perfect samples is super important, and not having any of the uh, Nyquist effect, which is really what it helps cut down on is super important so you don't have any uh, high frequencies that you're not seeing uh, sweep back down into the low section and phase with, with everything else, if that makes sense. If you don't know what the Nyquist effect is, go ahead and uh, look that up. Because frequencies that go above 22 kilohertz don't just magically go away. They go back down. Um, the multiband, I'm not using any of the multiband features here. Really just wanted to use uh, the master band here. I am uh, centering it, even though it's a non-stereo audio file, I did just full center, so no stereo at all. Uh, not messing with the attacker release times, and I am using the low cut, and that's where the linear phase filters uh, come into effect. To help prevent any more phasing, uh, linear phase filters add a bit of latency uh, to basically keep the phase relationship of all of the different frequencies. Uh, it's fantastic. Love it. Um, but I'm cutting at 32 hertz. And you can see here is the grayed out section. It's not quite perfect, but it does work fantastic. Uh, so I'll go ahead and actually toggle the effect here. There's without any processing. And I'll bring the processing in. You notice that there's the biggest effect on the high end. That's coming from the compression. Uh, I boosted some of the mid-range, as you could... Uh, no, I didn't. Uh, the boost in the mid-range comes from the compression, and that helps it mesh with the guitars and everything else in the track. So, that's how the bass is done. So the next part is the uh, guitar stem. So these guitars are very honky mid-present. Uh, right around 150, 170 hertz. Um, to help counteract that, I distorted it uh, with the Tesla SE saturation plugin. 
Uh, this helps boost some of the higher frequencies, especially around 500 hertz. And also makes it louder. Uh, just a just an effect of uh, distorting it. From there, it goes into the nasty DLA. It's a delay plugin that I absolutely love. Uh, and then that goes into boot EQ, where I have the EQ section actually just turned off. Uh, then it has the uh, valve emulation section turned on. And based off of the sound I was getting out of the track, I thought vintage tubes would sound a little bit better, especially on this uh, guitar. So that's just the direction I went. Uh, boosted the drive into the tubes just a little bit. But other than that, really subtle effect. I can actually toggle it here. I find it has the most effect on the high end, uh, but it does have a very slight effect on the uh, mid range. That goes into a compressor using a lot of the same settings that I used on the bass. Uh, higher cut though, because uh, I didn't feel like there was anything below. I don't know, that's about 80 hertz or so, or well, 60 hertz or so. Anything below there didn't really need, so cut it out. Again, not using the multiband features, uh, just the master. So that's how the initial guitar was mixed. Uh, so then we have this. This is the secondary guitar. And actually for this, we'll go ahead and enable the automation clip. So you notice this is uh, panned. Uh, that we'll get into that in a second, because it, and that's because it meshes with the primary guitar. Oops, there we go. And by fading them left and right respectively, uh, it creates a very nice wide stereo image. If you can hear that. So that's uh, what I'm using the panning for. And the automation clip is just to control that. If you can see a channel eight here, it does change. Uh, so that way I can have the primary guitar centered until the secondary guitar comes in. And these two are actually using basically the same settings. Uh, there's just an EQ on the first one just to mix it in a little bit later. It's Emissary. Uh, it's a guitar amp emulation plugin. I liked the saturation that I was getting out of it on its clean channel with a little bit of boost in the gain and turning the brightness switch on right here. Uh, that goes into EQ to drop off the super highs and super lows. Not super necessary, but it does help just a bit. And that goes into a compressor. And there was a little bit of noise in the recording, so I uh, added this little curve here to help clamp down on that when there's nothing happening. Uh, it's a low enough threshold that it's not going to act as a noise gate for anything else. Uh, use the same approach I normally do for compression. Again, the uh, multiband feature is turned off in this case. And for the secondary uh, guitar, largely the same, second Ignite amp, uh, parametric EQ, and compression. I actually just copied the settings over for this one. There was, in the second one here, there's a little bit more EQ for what I thought sounded good. It's simple as that. Uh, so next, what do we got? Guitar 4. Left this one as is. Felt it didn't need to be tweaked that much. Sometimes you don't need to do anything to the sound, and it sounds just fine. Especially coming into the end of the track, that a little bit of noisy aggression really comes through quite awesomely. Uh, next guitar track. And this one's also panned. I did the little stereo effect. Even though these guitars are completely different, uh, it's it can still be a really cool effect. Uh, they are different volumes, so I had to try and get them about the same level. But you, as you can hear, they're played completely differently as well, so. I kept them playing centered uh, up until that point. Uh, 
happy. And I was able to do that because they were completely different sounds. Uh, they're occupying two different frequency ranges. So it was perfectly fine to keep them centered. Uh, but I did want that little extra bit of stereo at the end though. So that's just why I did that. And they are a little bit more similar than they were earlier in the track. Uh, next, we have the guitar bus. Oops, crap. This is where some of the other guitar tone comes from. Not really using it much. I actually have it turned off at the moment. And that was with the OTT compression, I believe. Yeah, that was done in Ableton. So we'll just leave that off for right now. Uh, next, we have the most interesting part of the track, the vocals. Oops. Okay, we're good. So the vocals were extremely interesting to mix. They're very heavy on the high end, um, and I think that's just a result of the recording. Uh, but I had to use a bit more compression to help tone that back and bring the, the mid-range in so we can get some of the, the heft in the voice. We'll go ahead and listen to it. And I am using a, I have bust these together. Oh, we won't hesitate. So no effects really, Whoa, except for some compression. Way. Same compression on both and sides. Oh, we won't hesitate. And then that goes into another nasty delay. Uh, pretty straightforward. I'm actually turning off the dry mix in the plugin and then uh, using the FL Studio mix knob. Um, I just found it was easier to mix it that way rather than having it routed through the plugin. Oh, we won't hesitate. Next, I'm using another boot EQ, which I am actually using the EQ section here. Uh, boost in the high frequency, uh, no Q changes. Uh, boost at around, mm, uh, it's about 6.8 kilohertz, 6.9, 6.8, right around there. Uh, and then a boost in the low mids. Well, I say low mids. They're still pretty much in the middle. Uh, 1,000 hertz, we're about. Not very much. And a drop off in the extreme lows, 250 hertz and below. Um, that goes into a compressor. This is one of my favorite compressors, uh, Density Mark III, just in stereo mode. Oh, we won't hesitate. Wow, no No more than about four decibels of compression most of the time. It's hovering around two. I uh, have the timings turned down a little bit. This compressor is very fast, uh, but I wanted to really preserve some of the details in the voice, so extra fast compression there. Oh, we won't hesitate. Wow, no And I won't forget it. The delay really goes a long way to selling the sound and helps it really sit in the mix pretty well. Uh, and I also did use the stereo trick that I normally do, the left-right panning, except the vocals are pretty much uh, this, similar enough that I could uh, just leave it, the panning as is. So that's how everything was mixed. You can see the levels here. I tried to make it so everything occupied uh, different frequency ranges as best I can. Take your meds uh, there were some of the guitar sections uh, that we didn't actually hear. Well, not, I just wanted to point one out real quick. Uh, this part. That goes a long way in the middle of the track because uh, everything drops out and that guitar pops through. That is pretty awesome in my opinion. I just wanted to call that out. Okay, so everything's mixed. I think everything's pretty straightforward there. Uh, let's get into the mastering. Uh, first things first, Baxter EQ. This has become one of my favorite bus EQs to ever use. Um, basically, it's a, a shelving EQ. They can be used in mid-side mode. I just auto-turn on mid-side, and it helps widen out the stereo image fantastically. Uh, so first, on the lows, I'm using a 43 hertz cut on both of them. It's a little bit higher than what the bass sits, but I like the curve off so we don't lose too much of the of the bass guitar there. Um, then the shelf is set to 116 uh, hertz for both of them, a slight boost on the center and a drop back on the stereo. Uh, if you want your uh, 
low end to be really present, uh, then you want to have it centered. Uh, having something centered makes it sound like it's coming from inside your head almost, and that's actually a good thing for bass and kick drum. Uh, less good for high end stuff, um, so that's why I drop the uh, the low end off in the or the high end off in the in the center channel. Uh, for the high frequencies, though, I am boosting the stereo spread and dropping back the uh, the bass the bass in the uh, in this in the stereo image. Sorry, let me get my words together. Um, if you have bass in your stereo image, like if you have two opposing bass sounds, you're going to get a lot of phasing, and that's not going to be very pleasant, especially for the listener. Uh, so I drop that back just enough to make it less audible. Uh, because of the way ears, your ears perceive audio, having even just a little bit quieter can go a long way. Um, then we're getting into the shelving part. Uh, for the uh, high frequency in the center channel, I'm just dropping at 7.1 kilohertz. Not a lot. I'm doing a bit more, a lot bit more, in the uh, in the mid side or the, the side channel. So you can see that I'm uh, boosting uh, plus three to the... Uh, to the sides there. I don't know. That might be plus 3 dB. I doubt it though. It doesn't sound like 3 dB. So it's, it is what, or, well, it is labeled dB. I guess it is. Hmm. Never read that. Uh, shelving uh, top end off at 21 kilohertz and 28 kilohertz respectively. Uh, it's just personal preference to taste. Uh, no boost to the mids and, or the middle. And then a, uh, what, I guess 2 dB. Uh, boost to the sides. So that is a very awesome EQ, to say the least. I'll go ahead and turn it on and off for you to hear. So as you can probably hear, the bass becomes a lot more focused when I turn on that EQ. It doesn't do a lot else. Uh, the stereo image does widen up a little bit, but the bass just all of a sudden is focused, which is pretty awesome. And not to use a buzzword or whatever. But anyways, that goes into another EQ where I'm doing largely the same thing I did before, except I'm boosting a little bit of the lows around 200 hertz. Uh, tube emulation's back on with the uh, vintage setting with some extra drive and that's it it's really all that is needed there i'm going into a master eq here again that same drop at 150 hertz a little bit boost in the low end to extra, to add extra thump to the kick and a boost in the high end like i said the symbols were getting a little bit much by this point but i figured that a Small boost in the very highs would fit all right because there's not a lot else going on up there. So that's why that's there. Um, then I put the EQ before the compressor, adding another uh, compressor here. This one is in mid-side mode, just like the Baxter EQ. Uh, but now we're compressing the mid and side separately. Uh, have the drive on the, on the sides turned way up because they're wasn't really a lot going on in the sides like not not a lot of these sounds are actually stereo they're either just they're mono panned left or right so uh, there's not a whole lot of stereo going on so i wanted to add as much as i could so to speak uh, uh the range knob adjusts the maximum am amount of compression so it's set to right around four decibels right around the green spot here um just to make sure that it's not clamping down on anything su super hard and not over compressing. Uh, same goes for the uh, the sides there. And I do have the link uh, between the two compressors turned on. So basically you can have one compressor affect the other one and, the, and vice versa. Uh, but I have that turned back so they're not fully affecting each other. So if I were to turn the link up to 100%, it'd basically be like having one compressor controlling both. 50% is they each have their own effects, but they are linked somewhat. So they 
they each uh, adjust the volume a certain amount based on each other's uh, signal. But I do have that turned on just a little bit to make sure that the mid was being compressed in slightly the same way as the sides because I didn't want to have massively different compression profiles, which can it can add a pumping effect that I don't find pleasant. You know, that uh, compressor pumping effect, it can do that and it can be even more obvious in this case. Um, so slightly enabled. Uh, the color knob. This, I'm not 100% sure how works. All I know is that if I turn it up, it adds a slightly warmer sound. I think it's placing more emphasis on the mid-range. That's what it sounds like from what I've listened to. Uh, all the way left is a little bit more like a modern compressor, a little bit more focused on the uh, lows and highs. Um, I wanted a warmer sound. I tend to like a warmer sound in my mixes, so I turned it a little bit right. Not, not the whole way though. Uh, timings are uh, faster for the uh, mid-channel, especially with the bass, you can afford to have a, a bit faster timing. And to negate the compressor pumping effect, I have the uh, timing on the sides uh, turned back. Uh, you can definitely hear the compressor pumping effect in the high frequency. Um, so that's where it's most obvious. It's a little bit less obvious in the in the bass, especially since we're compressing in a lot already. Um, then it's just in mid-side mode. Uh, Nothing else is used there, but it's a fantastic plugin. Would recommend anybody download it. It's completely free from a variety of sounds, so check it out. Uh, then that goes into a Maximus, where I'm using largely the same compression ratio and threshold across the board here. I'm just uh, adjusting the input volumes ever so slightly. Slightly, you can see it's changing there. Uh, timings basically all set the same. I am using the oversample and linear phase filters again. Um, I, the top ratio is slightly different for, uh, for each one, uh, but really the volume is not getting up that loud that it's using that ratio a whole lot. So, um, I did adjust the stereo image ever so slightly in this plugin as well, just to widen it up just a little bit, like really not much, but I think it helps sell everything. Um, the release time is turned down in the mids and, uh, and in the highs as well. Um, the really it's the attack and release times in Maximus are quite long, especially for the mids and highs. Uh, they're just about right for, or I found to be near perfect for the low end, uh, but they are slow for the mids and highs. And then the master is lengthened just a little bit to help negate a pumping effect, but add some compression. Um, that's basically the mastering chain. There's a limiter here, but it's not doing anything. So that's how everything was mixed and mastered. Hope you guys enjoyed learning a, a little bit about acoustic mastering. I've been Zator. See you guys.